Monday Live with the Creativity Cave. I'm so excited to be stamping with you. I hope that you had a great weekend. Sorry, I'm looking for some lips with color. I hope that you had a great weekend wherever you were and whatever you were doing. We had a busy weekend. We had a... Uh, oh. Almost there. Almost got it. <laughs> Someone actually told me they were impressed that I could talk and put lip gloss on at the same time. Y you would not believe what I can do at the same time. <laughs> um, we had a busy weekend on Saturday. Seems like something happened Friday too, but I can't remember. On Saturday, Carl ran um, in a seven mile race here in the Quad Cities called the Bix and ran really well <laughs> and so he had a, such a good time he um there they always invite like elite runners to run in the race and so he got to go they have like a what did he call it some kind of maybe it was just a fair I don't know some kind of event um for the um for the people to meet the elite runners and so he got pictures with um a bunch of them and he was so excited about that um and got to like he ran with olympians which was pretty cool he goes well i mean she was like 50 but she's still an olympian <laughs> and i'm like that's still pretty cool um in fact one of the pictures i have of him he's ahead of her so that's impressive um and so I, uh, I had a good time cheering him on, <laughs> my husband and I. Oh, so it's a seven mile race and we watched him at the halfway point. And then we like booked it out of the halfway point and then went downtown to the finish. And last year we pulled right up to a spot like literally right on the corner. And then when we went downtown, we pulled right up to a spot right by where they were running. <laughs> so this time we realized that we clearly had beginner's luck last year because we couldn't find parking in either location very easily. And then there's also this thing in Iowa, you might have heard of it because it's it's gotten some national attention in previous years called RAGBRAI. And I can't remember, it stands for something about the great bike ride across Iowa. So you dip your tires in the Missouri River and then you literally for a week ride your bikes across the state of Iowa, the long way, which is by the way, the long way. <laughs> it's long, I've driven it. I can't imagine biking it. And um, so that ended on Saturday in Davenport where this race was. And so the Bix is a big thing. Like I think there were 6,800 runners Plus, there are tens of thousands of people who do rag bride. They don't all do the whole thing. But anyway, usually they, well, I don't know. So there's a bunch of people in town for all of that. So I think that was part of the problem because it was really busy. But we had a good time and um, it was, uh, it felt like 109 on Friday. And so I was really worried about this race, like really worried. But we had storms blow through on um we had storms blow through on Friday night and it was like so cool Saturday morning. So that was really nice. And then, um, let's see, I think no, then yesterday. So we're getting uh, ready to sell our cabin, which is sad, but fine. Um, and so we went up there again. We've been up there, not like to stay the night and relax, but to go clean and and just spend the day. And it's a, it's not quite three hours to get there. And um, so we've gone every every Friday, every weekend for the like the last month. And so we went again on Sunday because <laughs> we had to pull some stuff home. And or I guess I should say we had to pull the last of the stuff that we had up there home. And oh my gosh, I'm so sick of driving up there and not staying up there and enjoying up there. 
So long story short, um, we went again on Sunday and, oh my gosh. So I think part of the problem is that I have to drive every time and that's the worst. <laughs> it's almost been six months, which means my husband is almost ready to drive. I cannot wait. I have to say that quiet because I don't want him to hear me complain about it. But oh my gosh, if you know what I mean. So, any hoop, as my daughter would say, any hoop. <sighs> I do not intend on going there this weekend. But I'm pretty excited because I'm working on a little family dinner because Ella just finished her. Um... Well, Debbie, what is your favorite episode? So I'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that in one second. But I'm super excited Ella's done with her, um, her uh, summer internship. So I'm excited and I think we're going to have like a nice family dinner this weekend or maybe late this week all together depending on Carl's work schedule <laughs> so oh I know what I was gonna tell you guys this is another fun story and then we'll go circle back to friends because let's be honest that's what's important here um so Carl I don't know if some of you might know that he wants to be a doctor so he is volunteering at the um he's volunteering at the local hospital here and so he tells us when he had his first volunteer session that um he delivered two babies and we were like uh what you're volunteering you didn't deliver babies actually he started with my mortality rate at the hospital is minus 200 percent because nobody on his watch died but two were born and apparently twins came in to be born and by the way this is a pretty decent sized hospital like it's not a rinky dink you know like teeny town I mean this is in the it's a pretty big city that we live in anyway um and so I don't know if they were short-staffed or what but <laughs> it was all hands on deck with whatever must have been going on in the hospital so they called him up to labor and delivery and he helped manage the process of twins being delivered and I think it was like it was a complicated birth and so everybody was there helping. And so he, um, he, uh, I think he just helped with some logistics in the delivery. So I thought that was funny. Like, you did not deliver babies. You know nothing about that, except I think you know where they come from. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the stork, right? Okay. So I am giggling because um, this, Debbie tells us she's watching part two of Chandler and Monica proposal. The second is Monica explaining the erogenous zones. Yes, that is awesome. <laughs> I shouldn't say that word on my video because I hope they won't like be mad at me. You, you know, you have to be careful of what words you use sometimes. So anyway, okay. Um, all right. Um, Debbie, <laughs> oh, Francie says, my favorite is when Phoebe says, my eyes, my eyes. That's when they see, she sees Chandler and Monica making out from Ross's potential apartment where they jump up for joy. Good episode. I like that one too. <laughs> oh, such fun memories. Um, I, uh, I just have to giggle about all that. So anyway, all right, I'm going to, my my thing is on here a little crooked there. I straightened it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I'm just giggling at the comment. Just call it the sweet spot. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so this week, today is the last day to earn your bonus day coupons, and then you can start redeeming them tomorrow. Um, we have an amazing special coming up, and by we, I mean me, and um, by and then also uh, Stampin' Up! has some specials coming up. So I'm going to go through all of that here in just a second. 
but um, lots of fun things. Um, Ken Adams, Regina Falange. <laughs> Uh, okay, sorry. Um, I think that uh, Friends is just the best. <sighs> it was a good time. It was just the right time and uh, so fun. Anyway, um, I giggle because today, you guys, I think today, maybe it was yesterday, but I think it's today, is Lisa Kudrow's, are you ready for this, 60th birthday. Like, she was old during that show because Friends kind of took place, I was almost the same age as they were. I was just a couple years younger than than they were in the show. And so that's, I think, part of why I have such an affinity for the show. But she turned 60 today. And since I'm only 29 and a half, that's really crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, like, how's that possible? And Okay, anyway, I just had to share that. Who could believe Sue has never seen Friends? It is like my favorite show ever. <laughs> so I love that show. Oh, so much. Anyway, well, um, I definitely recommend it, Sue. <laughs> It's just a good show. It is probably, obviously, some of the things in the the times are going to um, be a little different. You know, like there's certain things they'll probably say or do that are not politically correct anymore, but that's with any show. But I really loved that show a lot. It was very fun. And of course, like I said, it was kind of my... Um, my my time of life too, that they were, we were in the same time of life. So, okay, let's see. There's a couple of questions. Will Stampin' Up! update new products in the online exclusives for August? No, there, um, the online exclusives came out in July and there will not be new online exclusives. I don't think for a few months. So it's not, they're not, it's not a monthly thing. It's, um, it's, a uh, every maybe third or fourth month, probably every fourth month, I think. So, um, uh, that answers that question. Let me, I'm just going back to make sure. Okay. Just making sure I haven't missed any questions. All right. Um, Oh my goodness. Will I know if there will be a joining special in August? Um, I don't believe there will be, but I won't know for sure until tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure there will not because we just had one. Um, but August is such a good time to join Stampin' Up! And here's why. We get to pre-order items from the um, fall catalog. The, I don't know, are they calling it the I can't remember if they're calling it the September to whatever catalog. Hold on, let me quick. I'm let me pop online. Oh, I don't know if my well. Let's see. Sign in. Okay, so um. Oh, my phone might not have my new. Hold on. Oh my goodness, this is so much easier when my password was short. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so the new mini catalog it is called September to December. I couldn't remember. So the new mini catalog, um, we get to pre-order from it on the 2nd. And um, it's pretty awesome. So what's wonderful is if you join during the month of August, you can put anything from that mini catalog into your 
um, starter kit, which is pretty cool. And I, um, I, I just can't recommend it enough. And what's really nice about it is you might have noticed we've had some issues a little bit with products being available. So if you are, um, if you are a demonstrator, you get to pre-order things before customers can pre-order them, including online exclusives. Now we can, they don't give us all the online exclusives, but in the catalog, the mini catalog, we'll be able to pre-order all of those things. They do put limits. So like we can't order a hundred of something tomorrow or Tuesday, but, or Wednesday, whatever day the second is. Um, but you can pre-order the goodies that you're interested in. Um, someone asked, is your discount on top of can you still use your discount and also the bonus coupons yes now when you check out with bonus coupons please remember that's going to reduce your order total amount so for instance if you are um trying to get host stampin rewards with your 150 dollars or more order but you have 20 dollars in coupons that means your order is only 130 dollars so you would not qualify for your benefits, your host benefits, Stampin' Rewards. Um, and if you are, so yeah, so just be aware of that. Um, and likewise, you know, like it will knock you down if you're trying to get like a half price item or whatever the thing, whatever it is. So just be aware of that. Um, and then also I have a special... If you spend a hundred dollars um, from during the month of August, uh, we will give you a really really cool item out of the holiday catalog. I can't show it to you yet, but I will pre-order it and make up a sample immediately. I'm very excited about it, so that's really cool. And more details will be coming out about that um, shortly. Uh, but we can't pre-order till the second, so um, just bear with me for a moment, but yeah. Okay. Now, if you've never thought about joining Stampin' Up, there's so many benefits to it and bless my heart. But, um, Therese, did you get the email from Stampin' Up about the new login? Cause the whole platform just changed. We've been talking about it a long time. I've sent emails about it. We've talked about it in our team meetings and there is a little video explaining how to do it. So make sure to check that out. Okay, um, but let's see. There was one other question I wanted. Oh, I wanted to point out because Beth Ann is just the best. Beth Ann said, joining Dina's team was one of the best decisions I made. If you join now, you will get in on the fun. I know. Thank you, Beth. Beth Ann, you're kind of just the best. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. Okay, Laura is asking, how do you redeem the bonus coupons? When you check out, it will ask if you have any coupon codes, and there are coupon codes. That's where you put them in, copy and paste. And you can copy and paste, like if you have a whole list of them, you can copy and paste all of them at once and put them in. It will guide you through pretty easily. Okay. All right. Um, now, I'm going to flip my screen around and show you a few things. And then we've got some great projects to stamp. Really great projects, I'm very excited. Okay, so here we go. All righty. So um, first off, my inked and tiled and my trucking along classes are going to be emailed out right after our live. So I'm excited about that. Um, these are really fantastic classes, but you can still get yours. Um, if you ordered them before this today, I would say before today, they are shipped and on their way to you. And if you order them after today, they'll ship just as soon as we can get them out the door for you. But I do have a few extras of both. Um, these classes are fantastic. I'm really pretty happy with how they both turned out and would love to have you join the fun. Both of them are really awesome, awesome classes. Just great ideas for both bundles. Inked and Tiled is for sure become one of my very favorite uh, stamp sets. And even these punches that I thought were weird at the beginning, <laughs> really like. 
And so I'd encourage you to take advantage of that if you are interested. Um, my classes for next month are going to include the earthen uh, textures bundle and the Daisy Delight. Is that the name? I always forget. Um, Daisy, 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 Cheerful Daisies. That's the name of the bundle itself. So I've got two classes coming out next month. Again, earthen textures and uh, Cheerful Daisies. So that'll be great. Um, then uh, today is the last day to get subscribed to the sunshine and creativity delivered box which is going to be on fun ways to use your background stamps and i'm very excited about this one too background stamps are kind of like those things that you really are like oh i gotta have it but then you get them and you're like what do i do with it and so this is going to be so much fun to learn um, what to do with these fun background stamps. And you can use all kinds of different stamps. I will show you some fun examples with, um, with some of these and as well as some others. So it'll be great. Uh, I will also have a Friday fun video on Friday. This week's was really fun. And we're going to actually use a leftover piece from this past week's Friday fun video in today's. And then last but not least, the Earthen Elegance All-Star Video Class Bundle, which, by the way, is separate from the class I'm doing. This is um, free with a $50 purchase through today, or you can purchase it for $15, or today is the last day you can subscribe. And when you uh, do a six-month subscription, you pay for five and get the sixth for free. So there you have all of that. Okay, so... Next up, let's get a little stampy, stamping going. Um, I have a really fun little project to share with you. And um, this is going to combine kind of an unlike me, an unlikely partner, um, which are actually some of my very favorite products in the annual catalog. So the Earth and Textures bundle, um, as I mentioned, is going to be my class this month and you can see here's some of the pieces that are included in it I have uh well here's the rest of them I guess um so there's and by the way if you're a demonstrator who attended creativity now you might have seen there's a really cool video showing how um this this uh suite came to be and one of the artists at Stampin' Up! literally made tiles and photographed those tiles that were glazed and whatnot and created um, our DSP out of that, that coordinates with this. Anyway, it was really cool. And um, so I really like this, I think in part because it's unique, it's just a little bit different than anything we've had, um, especially just the way it came about. And then the other thing that's one of my favorites are the paper florist dies. So there's a whole bunch of dies, as you can see in this. And I'm going to put these two together for a really cool card um, with a neat, in, a neat closure today. So let's get started. I am going to start with just a regular old half sheet of cardstock. I'm going to score it. And I'm laughing because I forgot to measure oh, my score line. I think it is yeah okay so one so I've just got a regular half sheet of cardstock and I'm going to score it at one and a quarter okay and let's see one and a quarter and five and a quarter wait is that right Just gotta remember one and a quarter and five and a half I was gonna say that is not right five and a half yes that makes sense because one and a quarter plus four and a quarter is five and a half okay so there we go so this is creating I guess isn't this a gatefold I'm so bad with folds I don't really like fun folds and I like to make up my own terms for stamping 
I'm not sure, but I think this is called a gate fold, right? I don't know. Whatever. It's a it's a cool fold, but we're going to make it cooler. Okay. Now I got this idea and I will show you the original swap card that I received that gave me this idea. So I didn't conjure this up on my own. Oh my gosh, I'm incapable of doing fun folds by myself. I can't do it. But I really like the idea and I hope you guys are going to like it as well. Okay, so I'm going to um, take and I've got a few pieces, different pieces. So I've got, um, let's see, I wrote this all down. A one by five and an eighth inch piece of white. No, a one. Yeah, a one by five and an eighth. Okay, sorry. I was like, I'm not saying that right. One inch by five and an eighth inch. And then a one and an eighth by five and a quarter black. Okay, and then that's going to go right here. And then I have two pieces, two of the following pieces. Actually, it's not going to go there. I lied. Um, <laughs> two pieces of two and five eighths by five and an eighth white and two pieces of two and three quarters by five and a quarter black. Okay. By the way, if you have a four by five and a quarter inch piece, oh, it's perfect. All right. So I have two of these. Now I've taken one of the whites and one of the two whites and the smaller white, and I've embossed these both with an embossing folder. This is the Time Worn Text embossing folder. And we're going to adhere these layers together. Okay, so, and for goodness sakes, do not let me put that small one on the front of the card because that's actually not where it goes. <laughs> okay, I said it goes there, but I totally misled you. That's not what's happening. It goes on the inside, but you'll see. It'll all make sense in a moment. Okay, so here we go. We've got that and that, and then this is a plain one. Right there. Okay, so pretty. All right, um, we're gonna attach the embossed larger one, larger white embossed panel to the front of our card like so. Okay, and then we're not, oh my gosh, and I totally messed this up already. Gosh, I tell you, I get excited and then it's bad because I make mistakes. Okay, I'm just looking for my adhesive remover real quick, which I thought, yes, I have. We're going to remove some adhesive. Oh, goodness, Dina. Well, that's the nice thing is you can. Seal is not permanent, which is one of my favorite parts about it. But we do need to remove this because we got to pop this up. And I even have my popped up pieces ready to go, but yet I still forgot. Okay, so we're creating kind of a fun closure on this with some designer series paper and um, some designer series paper and uh, some dimensionals. Well, I shouldn't say dimensionals. I'm actually gonna use some of our foam um, adhesive sheets. I suppose the strips would work too if you had strips. I'll show you in one moment. Just as soon as I get this adhesive, I so flippantly applied, but there you go. It's nice to know that you can take the adhesive off should the occasion arise. Okay, so I'm going to pop this up. Now I've cut two roughly half inch strips of our foam adhesive sheets. They come, you know, in the size of uh, dimensionals. Okay, and I don't know that there's really a right or wrong to this, but I'm gonna put this on um, and we're gonna, it's gonna go right here. But I also have a two inch by four and a half inch wide strip of designer series paper. Now that is gonna go in here like that. Okay, so it's gonna create 
a cool closure. So I wanna make sure that I leave roughly three quarters of an inch space open right here. Okay, this will all make sense in a second in case you're like, what is she doing? Don't worry. Okay, so I'm just, to be safe, gonna leave about an inch, or in my case, roughly two finger widths. <laughs> a little less than two finger widths, but you get the idea. Okay. Oh goodness. Throwing things on the floor already. Okay, so I'm going to reattach this now, popped up onto my card, like so. Oh, it's perfect. All right, then I'm going to slide this piece of designer series paper in and we're going to attach it roughly like that, okay? And what this does is it like latches the card closed, which is pretty cool, right? So I'm putting, a, I would say, an exorbitant amount of adhesive down because who would ever put that much down? Well, unless you like buying a lot of adhesive. And hey, if you want to buy all that adhesive from my store, you go right ahead. I will never judge your adhesive use. <laughs> but now look at that. It's holding my card closed really nicely. Okay, and then it just slips out. So we've got the foam sheet strips, which we've put in here. They're the same width as a dimensional, you know, like they're like this. And I suppose if you, if push came to shove and you just wanted to use a couple like edge strips in here, that would work. This just was handy. Okay. So there is our closure and then it opens up really nicely. Now this piece right here totally does not match. So we're going to fix that here in a minute. But um, before we do that, I want to do the rest of the card. Now we haven't even gotten to the cool part yet. I mean, this is pretty cool, but I'm excited about the other parts as well. All right, now we're going to attach this piece, the one that we did not emboss, is kind of like the piece that you can write on. Okay, so happy birthday, blah, 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 love you, blah, blah, blah. And then we have the other piece. And then by the way, huh, it's perfectly lined up like that. Okay, again, this goes on the inside and I'm proud of myself for not messing that part up because that's the part I actually thought I was going to mess up. <laughs> oh, I was so wrong. Anyway, so there's that. So when you open it, it's just so pleasing to the eyeballs for how wonderfully neat and perfect it is. I love that. Okay, so the inside's nice. The outside is a cool closure. Now we got to make this extra, extra, right? Okay. Now I'm going to start on the inside and I've got this pot that's pretty cool and I'm going to stamp it in some Orchid Oasis. Okay. And just going to stamp that right there. And then I've got a couple of these flowers from our paper florist. So there's two sizes of this flower. We're going to use both sides, but this is the smaller size for the inside of our card. And I'm just going to add that to my card like so. And I will, um, ooh, actually I might be missing. I might need to cut one more piece for this. I think I do. Um, and then I'm going to take, I've got this leaf and I'm going to snip out, um, a couple of leaves. So I'm going to save that piece. And I'm going to tuck this in like that on here. So super cute. So it just adds a little pop of color to this. Okay. And then I've got a little sentiment to go with this. And what I love, so we can just fit it right in there like that. What I love about this stamp set, by the way, is we've got an outside sentiment, but then we're also going to add the inside sentiment, which... Ooh, did I put it on the block? Maybe not. I did not. That's why. Okay, so then the inside is going to have this thing that says... <laughs> 
you are proof there is good in the world. Well, like, who wouldn't like that coming to them, right? So uh, I'm going to stamp that in some Starry Sky ink, a little, just a little darker shade right there. Okay, super cute. Oh, and we're going to add this. I, this is, I'm pulling the one for the outside because we're going to put it on the outside too. But you get the idea. Okay, so that's the inside of the card. I can't wait for you to see the outside. All right, so we'll close that up. Now, for the outside of the card, uh, I have die cut my pieces, although we got to do one more quick. So I've done two of the pots from our um, earthen textures bundle. I've done a leaf, two leaves from our paper florist dies, and I've done a black center, and then we'll need one more like the one we have on the inside. And then I've got my um, flowers. Okay, so I'm going to put all of this together onto our card. And, oh, and then on this pot, I took, there's this little texture piece, and I ran the texture through it like that. How cool is that texture? And by the way, you might recognize it because it's also the same pattern, though this is not texture, it's just the pattern on the pot on the inside. So I thought that was kind of cool. All right, so we're going to add these to our card. And I'm going to adhere this one kind of directly onto our card. And then the second pot I'm going to pop up. And what's really neat is there's all kinds of combinations of pieces and textures and things you can do uh, for these pots. So for instance, um, there's this piece that goes across. There's this top part that's like got handles on it you could add so there's a lot of different combinations that you can do with this and get kind of some cool things all right so we'll attach that popped up then I'm going to well you know me I'm gonna curl my flowers just a little because let's be honest it's just awesome to put a little extra dimension wherever you can so this is the larger of the two flowers in this shape, and we'll add that right there. And doesn't that look cool? And then this is the smaller two, and this is all part of the paper florist. Okay, and I'll glue dot these two together. Now, in the earthen textures, there's also this die, which is like, you know, like a little spriggy thing, oh, which we're going to tuck in like that, just hanging out. Can't you see this at like home improvement? Well, maybe not home improvement, but like places where you, like I suppose Hobby Lobby would probably have it, uh, places where you get um, dried floral stuff. Okay. Anyway, so then I'm going to put my smaller one right here popped up because we popped up this one. Now I guess I should probably stick this down with a dimensional. And then I'm going to add to it a couple of leaves. And I like the leaves. They just add a nice pop of color. So I've got um, that little leaf sprig. And then I'm going to repeat this. But what I love about it is I still have all these leaves I can use on other stuff. So, you know, hold on to that. We'll have that kind of coming out like that. Oh, so love this. Home goods. Ooh, that's another good place. Gosh, I haven't been into home goods in a while. That would be fun. Okay, so there we go. Oh, so cute. And then I will add my black center. Now I gotta, I apologize, I gotta die cut one more. Now these flowers remind me of an, um, anemones. I think that's how you say them. I'm feeling like um, Nemo in Finding Nemo when he tries to say an anemone, an anemone, an anemone. Oh my gosh, I'm just like the kid. Anemone. Is that right? <laughs> so I feel like it is okay so let me quick dry cut one more flower center okay so 
also, I love this one because it's got like the little dots on it and I think it just looks awesome. So we'll put that right in the center there. Oh, isn't that so cute? I love this card. Okay, I have one more die cut piece, which is this um, label banner die. This is from the Stylish Shapes dies and I'm going to stamp it with my word, thank you. The thank you stamp is from the Earthen Textures. And we'll stamp that in, well, I guess we could do it in Starry Sky. I was gonna do it in black, but I think Starry Sky would be nice. Okay, so let me stamp this down. I'm sticking my butt way out. in hopes that it's straight. Oh, thank you. Phew, it's straight. That always makes me feel good. Okay, and then I'm gonna add it right here on top. How cute is this? And then, like I said, I'll show you the card that inspired this here in a minute. Okay, but there is my card. I love it. And you know, so we've got this little piece here. So we're going to cover that up. So to do that, I'm going to take my um, DSP. Let me quick measure this. It is, ooh, like 15 sixteenths ish. <laughs> um, I think I said this was four and a half, right? Ooh, four and three quarters. Sorry, my bad. Four and three quarters. Sorry, my thing came out of the track. There we go. Uh, four and three quarters by one and fifteen sixteenths. You know, ish. Hopefully, this will match. And what do you know? Not bad. So I'm just gonna attach that so that it's pretty. Um, or it matches on both sides. Now, if you are really good, you could have incorporated this color, but um, I wasn't in a moody mauve mode, Mo moody mauve mood when I made this card. Okay, so there she is. Ooh, but that's sticking out ever so slightly, so let's us just trim that off because we don't want moody mauve ruining the mood of this card. That would be... That would be kind of horrific. But I do like having the nice finished inside. Okay. So there we go. Oh, I did a bad job of cutting that. I can see the little... There we go. Okay. So let's put that on the inside. Oh. Isn't that awesome? I love it. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading comments here. All right, so whew, once more, that just pops out and it's kind of a fun little closure with that designer series paper. And I love the look of this one. It's just so pretty. So I hope you guys love it as well. Okay, now that was our first card. So um, join me this in August for our Earth and Textures class. The registration is going to come out probably tomorrow. If you are not on my mailing list, if you look in the description of this video, there's a link to join it, and then you will get a notice of this class coming out. So we would love to have you join us for some awesome inspiration just like that. Okay, now we're going to switch gears a bit to our next project, which is actually pretty simple. We're going to start out with a... Um, ba -ba, Melon Mambo card base. And I'm going to take, and I am using, um, oh, 
sorry, I needed to show you the inspiration for this card. So this is the inspiration. Let me put this back together. Um, from a friend of mine who I swap with. Her name is Deb. And uh, I love, she put that little gold accent across here, which is really cool. Of course, you can die cut that pot, the one we put on the inside. And then this is another die in there that she embossed the tips with gold, which is really fun. This is my favorite die in the whole kit, though I did not use it on my card. And then her card opens like that. So, and she used the um, paint, textured paint background, I think is the name of that uh, embossing folder. So I thought that was fun as well. Okay, so back to my card. I've got a, I'm using Timeless Arrangements, and this is a really fun bundle. It's got some really beautiful sentiments in the set, and I am going to uh, start with this piece right here, which is one of the um, pieces that comes in the set of dies. And how this works, by the way, and this is pretty cool, is like you have your, your label, we'll call it, and then you can add all these different die cut pieces and they're kind of designed to fit, you know, all the way around. Um, so it's kind of cool. Well, I used, uh, let's see, this one and this one on this card, or I'm going to. So I chose two of them, and then this is kind of the medium size label. And then uh, I'm gonna stamp my sentiment, and then I'm also going to add some um, embellishments. And then the, the other nice thing is, so like this has kind of the leafy branches, and then there's a single leafy branch, and then this one has the dotty branches, and then there's actually a couple, three single dotty things. Well, one, actually two die cut, the stamped image, but then there's one just by itself and so forth for all the different pieces. And then there's also a couple little background pieces in here that are really fun. So anyway, um, now what I want to do with this is I want to put this in the center of my card and then I'm just going to take and add a little pencil mark to mark the corners here. I suppose it helps if you have pencil lead. Oh, this might be my pencil that has no lead. Uh, do I have another pencil? Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm just going to mark the corners really lightly like that. Okay, so I've just marked them on my paper. You might not even be able to see it through the camera. But now I know where things sit. Okay, so I'm going to stamp my sentiment on here. And there's a lot of really wonderful sentiments, um, but this one really sticks out in my head, which is your kindness means everything to me. I love that. And I'm going to stamp that in some black ink onto my label. Okay, there we go. And then I've die cut um, those pieces I mentioned. I have two of each. So I've got two of these dotty branches in black and then two of the leafy branches in vellum. All right, and we're going to attach them to our, our label here. So you can use liquid glue um, or whatever your preferred method is. I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue on here and then attach it in the corner. And then I'm going to flip it around and do the same on the other side. Now you want to be a little careful that it doesn't stick out above the label because that's just going to look not the best. Okay, so that is cool. And then we're going to repeat this process with our vellum. So I'll just put some adhesive on both parts of this. Just be careful not to stick your finger in it. Ask me how I know. And by that, I mean the adhesive. We'll even put it on straight. Why not? Okay. 
Okay, and then I just love how this kind of fills everything out. But it doesn't completely fill it out. There's kind of some big open areas here. So I thought it would be good to fill those open areas up with some stamped images from our stamp set. So I'm gonna take this pretty little floral, rosy looking thing. And I'm also gonna take some of that, some of this dotty looking things. Don't you like my official name? I told you I like making up names for stuff. I don't kid about that kind of thing. All right, so I'm gonna stamp each of these in here. So let me grab my memento. And I'm going to do this uh, kind of sticking out in the corner. I don't want, you know, I don't want it way out here. I just want it. So roughly where that leaf is branching off, that's kind of the corner that I drew in with my pencil. Maybe just a touch outside of that. Okay, so that looks good. And again, you can kind of come back with your piece and make sure this is all lining up the way you had envisioned or, or, centering it up or whatever. Okay, now I also see there's kind of a hole here and here, so I want to fill that in with this dotty branch thing, whatever this is. Okay, so we'll put that right there. And another one right there, roughly opposites of one another. And now that's pretty full. There's still a little bit of empty space, like right there and there and there and there. So I'm going to take this cool little circular designy background and I'm going to take some smoky slate ink and I'm going to fill that in. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of put that right there and some more right here. I'm going to flip this around so it doesn't look like a, you know, exact copy. Looking good. Then I'm going to add some over here and it's just going to kind of show up where there's some empty spaces. Likewise over here. And maybe one more just to kind of even things out. This will be partially covered up, but we'll just throw it out here anyway. Right there. Okay, so really soft and pretty. You could even stamp those off, off if you wanted in your smoky slate ink. Okay. Now I want to pop my um, sentiment up and so I'm just going to put some, well, maybe that is good enough, put a dimensional in there. I'm not going to adhere it quite yet because I want to color my leaf or my flowers. So we've got a Melon Mambo card base so I thought I would use Melon Mambo blends on this. So I'm just going to color in with my dark first, right? Yes. And then we'll blend it out with our light. I think I have ink on me somewhere. I've gotten a couple of little marks on my card. Maybe it's my fingernails. Okay. <laughs> Blending this with my light Melon Mambo. And I'm not going to color the leaves in, but you could, I guess, if you wanted. I would maybe even use Smoky Slate just because they don't need to be uh, color color because I don't know if that would go for, for what we've got going on here. But I am going to color in these little dotty things with my clear wink of Stella because that's always a good idea. And I suppose I could color over my beautiful flowers with the clear wink of Stella too because you just really can't go wrong with clear wink of Stella. It's just always a good idea. Okay. So we've got all of that beauteous stuff. Let's, goodness, get the lid back on that thing. Okay, so I'm going to adhere this to my layer of black. So I'm going to start with a um, three, well, actually, what size is this? Three and three quarters by five with basic white. 
and then a three and seven eighths by five and an eighth layer of black, which will pop that whole layer up onto our card with our dimensionals. Like so. Because as we all know, everything's better popped up. Okay. Isn't that pretty? There we are. Now I'm going to pop that up. And if you want, you can erase uh, your pencil lines. But honestly, they won't really show because we've kind of stamped over them. But there we go. And then let's put this woo, right in the center like so. And isn't that beautiful? So really a pretty card and pretty simple to create. Your kindness means everything to me is just such a nice sentiment. So I think this would be lovely to send somebody in the mail and I think they would adore receiving it. Okay, let me put away my um, mess here. Set that aside. So that's a fun project. Um, okay, next up, ooh, I've got a really sweet card. So if you caught my Friday fun, we had fun with bubbles last week. And uh, the bubbles created this really cool background on here. And that was made with a little bit of water, dish soap, and re-inker. And if you want to catch the Friday fun video, I will, afterwards, I can link it in here. But um, it was pretty fun. It's just on my channel, so you can check that out. But we made this card. But I showed in the video, like, I had all these extra pieces from my experiments. And so I wanted to use something up. And so we're going to make this next card with one of the leftover pieces. So I've got this piece. This is on basic white cardstock, and I think it's pretty fun. It's just uh, when I was making it, it was really light, and so I wanted something a little darker, um, but I think it's really pretty. So I was thinking about all the things that have something to do with water, and, um, you know, I thought of the, the sea turtle stamp set, We've got some birds and seashells. We've got um, some, we've got all kinds of different things technically that could go with water. But I've been kind of itching to use this stamp set that I got during, I think I got it during the stamp set sale, which is this one, Sweet and Precious, because it is. Um, we've got the giraffe, mommy, and baby and we've got the sloths and I'm going to use the penguin. So I thought this was really sweet. And so we're going to stamp the penguin on here just as soon as I find what I did with it. I was going to say, I know I mounted the stamps right before I came on live, but what did I do with them? Ah, here they are. Okay. So I've got the mummy and baby penguin. I've also got some schmutz on my stamp that I want to get rid of before I ink it up. All right, now I want this to show up really nice and crisp on my card. So I'm going to use some stays on ink to ink this up and stamp it down. Now with stays on, you really need to be somewhat careful. To make sure you ink it up well and then stamp it down. Oh, and I sure hope that's not crooked, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm just giving this a second to transfer and oh, look at that. It's so cute. And the little bubbly background is very sweet on there. So that turned out perfect. Okay, um, now I just happen to have cut this to the exact right size to mount, like it already was cut the exact right size, to mount on a scalloped uh, contour rectangle. Now this is some Tahitian Tide, which is the re-anchor I used, pardon me, on here. And uh, I'm going to 
attach it. And because it curled a little bit, you know, because I got it all wet with soap and water and reinker, we're going to put a good amount of adhesive on here. Like, like a good amount. All right, now it just covers up the dots on here, which is just fine. And there we go. And I think that kind of makes everything pop a little bit. So that's pretty sweet. All right, uh, next up, I'm going to... Fold my card base, which is um, Orchid Oasis, and we'll pop this up on there like that. I don't know. I struggled whether or not to add like a layer of black or to use a black card base. So let's do a couple options, and you guys can tell me what you think. Like, should we have a layer of black in there at all? Um, should we just put it on a black card base? Which I'm grabbing. Should we use the orchid layer or just put this on a black card base? I don't know. What do you guys think? Like black and orchid or just black? Let me know. Okay, you guys like the black card base. That's good. Just black. Black and orchid. Oh, there's a lot of comments on here. Black with orchid base. Black. Okay, here, what if we did the sentiment, because that might change your tune. Because we haven't add this, added the sentiment yet. All right. Um, so, I'm going to stamp the sentiment. In black. That says, I'm always here for you. So cute, right? But wait, there's more. You know I love saying that. Um, let's clean this off. By the way, I saw somebody asking how to get Stampin' Blends off of photopolymer stamps. First of all, does it matter? Um, I would clean it on a scrubby. Um, if your photopolymer is stained, that's just life in stamping. It's going to get stained. You know, like this has got some black stained on it. It's no big deal. If it's clean and will stamp clean, then that's fine. Um, I You could take rubbing alcohol to it. I wouldn't like dip it in rubbing alcohol. I would maybe just put a little, uh, a little rubbing alcohol and then clean it with Stampin' Cleaner, like on a scrubby pad. But I find if I have like stays on, on my... Uh, stamps and I clean them on my scrubby the stays on comes off pretty well and this is just using our regular stamp and mist I don't I don't get stays on cleaner I'm too lazy to have two different cleaners but you can see most of that came off and um, if I you know really work it it'll the rest will probably come off as well so okay anywho um, so I'm going to stamp always here for you in, or I'm sorry. Yeah. Always here. Just always here in orchid. And let's do this right. I'll take a couple of post-its to cover up the parts I don't want inked so I can put just the sentiment on here. Now the important part of this process is you remove these post-it notes. That's really important. Do not forget that step, trust me. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp that on a little scrap of basic white that I have here. And I'm gonna trim this down just a smidgen with my snips. Okay, I don't, I always recommend using your trimmer, but this is a really skinny piece, 
so the trimmer becomes a little trickier to work with at this point when it's skinny like this. So we'll just do our best, our best cutting. <laughs> and nobody's gonna notice because they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, look at how cute those penguins are. And ooh, what's that cool background she has? <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna banner the ends of these. And now, this way we can bring in the orchid in the background. So that's what I'm going to do, since most of y'all said black, and many of you said with the orchid. I should have given you all the information up front. <laughs> okay, so I'm always here for you. So sweet. Okay, and then we'll pop this layer up on our card and let's just adhere this direct. And we'll pop this layer up. And we finished off a sheet of dimensionals, which is always quite satisfying. Such a good thing. Okay. So there we go. So pretty. All right. Um, so I love this because this is super easy stamping. It's just black on, on a little fun background. And um, it used up one of my pieces left over from that fun technique. Now, if you haven't checked out that video yet or tried this technique, I highly recommend it. It's so easy and fun. It's a little messy, but um, in my video, I give you some great tips on how to mitigate that mess. <laughs> and so I hope, um, I hope that you'll give it a try. It's just, it's really fun. And like I said, this is so quick and easy. So there we go. All right, now maybe we should sprinkle or sp or spritz this with a little Wink Estella. This was the one I just used, so I'm gonna pull out this one, which is a little wetter. That makes spritzing a little easier. So I'm just smacking this against my bone folder here, and then that gives me some spritzes on here, which hopefully the camera picks up. So there you go. Ah. So fun. Okay, so let me show you the cards I made today with kind of an interesting variety, I'd say. So we've got this kind of cool closure. All right, um, next week on our Monday Live, we are going to um, do our drawing for our card challenge. A lot of you have entered, so that's so awesome. Um, and then we'll have a new challenge issued uh, next week, so that'll be fun for August. And today is the last day to get uh, to earn bonus day coupons. Tomorrow is the first day to redeem those coupons. And then um, we will have, oh, there's another thing I forgot to mention. We're having a kit sale coming up. So check uh, back for more information about that. But there will be up to 30% off kits. And we have all kinds of kits, which are really wonderful. And I highly recommend them. Um, so we'll have 30 prints on off kits during the month of August. You can redeem your coupons for August. And then when you spend $100, I will give you a very cool um, item from the upcoming mini catalog as your gift. And it's fantastic. So uh, I hope to have you join us for any and all of that. If you want to get in on... Um, my classes that are just going out the trucking along or the t uh, inked and tiled, you can register for those. Um, drop me an email if you need the links. Um, and then um, I think that's everything. Oh, my next month's classes are the earthen 
uh, textures and the cheerful daisies. So more on all of that soon. If you're not a subscriber to my emails, please check the link in the description of this video. Of course, the thumbs up would rock my world if you could please. That helps me so much. And um, I hope that you have a fabulous day. Uh, Laura, Stampin' Up! did not do away with celebration. It is once a year in January and February. So yeah, we did do away with two times a year celebration, but not one time. Um, so just once a year. And I talked a lot about that back in January, February. So all right, guys, have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.